go. Okay. We're going to use a blank sheet. Or no, I'm just going to use this same house. I'm going to keep adding to this house that we were playing with in the first in the first uh, week. Uh, I've also, if you don't have it, uh, I still have. You still have it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've also put up a, a clean one up on um, just here under practice house. Oh, okay. So if you want, could go in there. you could go in there and just download it if you want to um, to play with it. But it, I mean, everything I'm doing is just so we, we end up with like a product, but you, you don't have to use the house either because I'm going to be just talking about roofs. So you can make a roof by itself if you want. And just play with that, that too. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so uh, these are the fantastic uh, walls we made last week. Uh, so I'm just going to delete those. Don't need those. So there we have the, uh, the house with the, uh, the cornice on it that, that we were looking at. Oh. Can you see that? That's terrible. That's a terrible projector. Is it <coughs> it's not this. It help it to turn off yeah, maybe. Oh, that's a bit better. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll just turn it on so it's hidden line. Yeah, yeah, that looks okay. Yeah, sorry? Okay. Nothing, nothing. Okay. So I'm just going to repeat what we did uh, with making the roof in the house, first of all, and then I'm going to go a little bit more into detail about a uh, little bit finer edges on roofs and stuff like that. So I'm going to delete this roof, so we start from scratch. So delete roof, so we're, we're left with the box, the main box of the house. And uh, I'm going to go into the roof plan, which we set up. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll set, have a look at the elevation first of all. So we can see we have these three levels, ground floor, first floor and roof plan that we set up in, in, in the first week. So, and we also set up a view over here for the roof plan. So I'm going to go into that roof plan like this. And here's the roof plan. Underneath we can see the walls of the, of the first floor because we have the underlay switched on over here in the properties, if you see, just over here. So if I go to underlay and say, well, I don't want to see the first floor, I can just press none. And so we just, we ju it's just showing anything that's on the roof level without showing anything behind. But if you're drawing a roof, it's a good idea to figure out where the walls are underneath. There's a little tip. So there we have the first floor and I'm going to make a roof. So I go to the architecture tab, I go to roof and the first roof we're going to make is roof by footprint which is the simplest one, which we did before. Press roof by footprint. And here we have the option now to either select the walls, select lines, or to draw the roof. So if I select lines, you can see that it selects a specific line, or I can select a wall, or I could just use the line tool to just draw the shape that I want to, uh, that I want to create. So let's just select that line there, select that line there, there, there. And once I've selected more or less all the, um, the elements, I'm going to use the trim command to make sure we close, the, uh, to close the, the whole thing. This is showing blue on the screen and it's showing purple on my... Uh, um, oh, anyway, never mind. Yeah, I tried that, but it doesn't seem to be doing anything. Uh, the, no, the flag with the cable because one of the channels, the red color is not showing. Yeah, it's, it's a bit dodgy this. I think I'll just have to talk to the person about getting a new one. Ah, never mind, never mind. Anyway, you can see the blue line, so that's all that matters. So, I'm going to use this trim button up here. Uh, shortcut is TR, so you can either type TR or press the trim button. And you can see down here there's a gap between the two, uh, the two lines, so it's very important that we just trim those lines together and then trim these lines together so that uh, it becomes one entire uh, shape. Now, what? You still have one corner that is open. Oh, that's right, yeah, thanks. So trim that one. There we go. Thanks. Okay, so let's uh, accept that. And then we've got a roof with a slope coming from every single angle. So I'm just going to, so let's just get the 3D view going at the same time here. Close these two down. WT to set up the, the open panel side by side. So there's the plan view and here's the, uh, the 3D view. So 
So we've got a, a standard roof with a slope coming from every edge. So let's just look at this, select the roof again. If I want to take the slope off this edge, if I say edit the footprint, select this line, switch off the slope. Let's just do it one at a time and see what that does to the house. So now you can see that there's no slope. Let's just zoom this and turn around on that side of the, uh, of the house. So you can very quickly, let's try it again, modify what you want to achieve with the, uh, the shape of the roof in terms of a standard build-up roof to the, uh, to the building. Of course, now we can leave the cursor sitting on top of the walls, press the tab key to highlight all the walls, and then select, and now we can attach them to the roof. So that, that means that whatever changes we now make to the roof, the walls will follow. You don't have to go back and, and edit the walls okay, separately. Sorry, okay, I'll do that again. If I leave the cursor on one of the walls, I press the tab button, it highlights all the join walls, and then I can select all the walls at once. And now I press this button, attach top base, and then I just select the roof that I want to attach it to, and the walls will automatically uh, attach to the roof. So let's just play with that too now while it's on the screen here. So if I go back and select and edit the footprint again, let's say I want to change something about the roof. Let's say I want to change this slope from 30 degrees. Let's change it to 60 degrees and see if Revit will let us do that without giving us an error message. Yeah, it does. So we've got one side of the roof is now 60 degrees and the other side is 30 degrees. But the walls follow along. So you don't have to go through the, the work of redrawing the walls. The walls are attached to the roof. So that's kind of the principle of that. It's just a time saver idea. So that's as, uh, pretty much as ugly a roof as we could possibly make. So let's go back and try and rationalize a little bit. So I'm going to go back, select it, edit the footprint. And you can always go back and edit the roof. You never have to worry about it. So I'm going to make the roof in such a way that uh, we're just going to make it a simple roof like it was before. Uh, and I'm going to take off as many slopes as I possibly can. So if you want to make just a simple pitch roof with you know, one slope on one side and one slope on the other side, you only need to have one of the edges on one side defining the slope. Okay? So I'm going to choose this one. I'm going to change it back to, what will I change it to? I'll change it to a uh, 45 degree angle. I'm going to take the slope off the end. Undefine that. I'm going to take the slope off this. Undefine that. So now we only have two slopes, one going this way and one going this way. We don't need to worry about this because the slope will be continuous. And I'll just show you what that means. So if I accept that, you can see that now we've got a simple roof where the slope is continuous. We don't need to put a slope on this edge and on this edge and on this edge. You just need to have one slope in the direction and you get uh, some kind of a roof like that. Okay. Now you can see I forgot to change that to 45 on the, on the other side. So I've got 45 on one side and 30 on the other side. So I'm going to go back in, edit the footprint, select this, and change the angle to 45 degrees. So there we go. Okay. Simple enough? No answer. All right. Okay, so now we've got a roof set up. So exactly like we were talking about the walls last week, we can also change the construction of the roof. So once we have a roof there, we can modify it any way we want. So I can just select this roof, for example, and exactly like the walls, it's set up as a basic roof, a generic 400 millimeter thick roof. There are a couple of loaded roofs in the project. For example, we could choose this one, warm tile and timber roof. I select that. It doesn't change anything in this hidden line view, but if I change it to a realistic view, for example, on the plan, you can see that it's actually put in some tiles. Let's just change this one also to a realistic view. That projector is terrible. Okay, okay. Let's just change this back to a hidden line view. So we got something like that. 
And then if we select it again, exactly like when we're dealing with the walls, it's completely the same process. We can go into uh, edit type, edit structure, and all the layers of the wall are in there. Or sorry, all the layers of the roof, but it's exactly the same process of the, as the wall. So I can go in and change the materials in here. I can change the thickness of the materials uh, and so on and so on. Uh, and we've gone through that process last week in walls, so I'm not going to repeat it again uh, in roofs because it's, it's exactly the same. It's just less complicated. You can see it doesn't have the options down here for sweeps and reveals and all those modeling elements. So it's, it's a much, much simpler tool to, uh, to deal with, okay? Okay, so, so now we have a roof that looks kind of, uh, let's just maximize the 3D view here. It looks kind of, uh, kind of there, but we have these edges. And it's usually a dead giveaway uh, of student work is that the edges of the roof haven't been, haven't been worked out. So there's a couple of ways of dealing with that. First of all, we can change the overhang. You can see that at the moment, the roof just comes directly down on top of the wall. But of course, you need an overhang in most pitched roof situations to take care of rain and so on. So it doesn't come inside the house. So I'm just gonna select the roof again and uh, edit the footprint. And we can actually select the individual edges and we can just type in, well, maybe we want a 600 millimeter overlay on that side. Uh, sorry, overhang, and also sometimes you get the option to change it and sometimes you don't. So this one, you can type it in. This one, you, you can't type in what? for some reason, and I don't know why that is. I've, I still haven't figured that out. But what you can do is you can, uh, I don't know why this happens, but if you want to move it, you can just use the move tool up here, select it, and then you can just click where you want it to move it to and you can just type in overhang. So that's a little weird thing about Revit. I'm not sure if it's purposeful or, or if it's just a bug, but uh, sometimes you can, you can select roof and you can type in the overhang at the top. Other times, you can't type it in. Maybe it's, maybe it's because it's not the furthest line outside, because that one it is. And, uh, yeah, but this one doesn't define a slope. So. Uh, you see, it's, 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 it's one of those things, I can't figure out the logic of it yet, and I haven't been able to find out anywhere where they talk about it. So, so anyway, you either have the option to type it in at the top here, or you can, you can just select it, and you can either just drag it around, or you can, um, you can uh, use the move tool to move it a specific dimension, okay? So if I accept it like that, you know, at least those edges have got some overhangs. So let's just give this one an overhang too. Out of the footprint. Uh, I'm going to use move. Let's move it out by. Make sure we move it perpendicularly. Move it out by 600. And accept it like that. So now we've got some kind of overhang on the roof, okay? But now we want to put a, a, an edge, an edge trim on the roof. And I'm going to talk a little bit in detail about this. I reckon. So, if you remember from. Uh, last week I showed you very quickly how to make this shape and I said don't worry about it for the moment but actually this is this is quite an important uh, little technique to have because it, it adds so much quality to your to your uh, to your uh, models and your drawings um, it's 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 called making a profile and it's a way of drawing a shape that allows you to extend the shape over anything that's continuous so for example, we could draw a profile to make a gutter edge, to make an edge to the roof, to make a handrail in a balcony, anything that's continuous. All we need to do is make a shape and we can insert it into the project and we can use it for any of these things. So I think I'm gonna do it a couple of times over the next few weeks just so you get the hang of it. So what I'm gonna do first of all is uh, I'm going to add a fascia to the roof, which is just a board that finishes the edge of the roof. And there is a, a tool in Revit that just does that. If I select the arrow under roof, and I select roof fascia, uh, we get the standard fascia 25 by 250 millimeters or 19 by 250 millimeters. So let's just put that on first of all. So I'm just gonna click an edge like this, holding down control. And I can basically just go around the roof. And you can see that it's being added up facing upwards, but uh, that has to do with the way the profile is drawn. But we can flip that using these little arrows here. And so we got something that looks like 
you know, a finishing board, a fascia board on the edge of the roof. Let's just turn that to hidden line again, just so you can see it a bit clearer on the screen. There. So you've got some kind of a finishing, finishing board on the roof. And then what we have, it's exactly the same command, but they give it a, a separate button just because you're always putting gutters. Gutters are always being put on a roof. So you can just select a roof gutter. I just need to select the edge of where we want to put it. And it'll put a standard gutter wherever we want to put it on the roof like that. And you can see there it is there. But all of these things are actually the same object in Revit. So this shape is a profile shape. Uh, just like this timber shape is a profile shape. Just like the molding or the cornice molding that we made last week is also a profile shape. They're all made in exactly the same way. So I'm just going to go th quickly through how you do that and then maybe get you all to do it because it's, uh, it's, quite, uh, it's quite useful. So this is the first, poss this is the first uh, possibility to use families in the Revit course. Uh, just in a very simple way, okay? So I'm going to make a new family. So I go into the Revit tool. I go to new. Yeah? Sorry, will I stop there? Uh, the fascia. Say that again, sorry? The fascia. Yeah. Where was that? Oh, that's under roof. Anything to do with it is, uh, uh, the roof is under roof. So you press the little arrow here, under roof, and you can come down to fascia. And then you just, then you just select where you want it to, to go. And you don't only have to select one. You can, you can keep building it up. You can add more fascias on top if you want to. For example, if you want to make some combi combination in there. I think what I'll do first is I'm going to make a cross section through the building. So let's go to the roof plan and let's make a view and make a section just going across the building like this and then go into the sections. So now we can see there's our molding, there's our gutter, and there's our fascia set up. Shut that down. Okay, so making a profile. We go into the Revit button at the top here, say new family, not new project, but new family. And once we do that, we get uh, the family templates dialog comes up. Uh, if, you, if this doesn't come up, your, your Revit must be installed in a slightly different way. And if that's the case, I'll come down to you afterwards and give you a hand with it. Well, let's go into the English one because that's got more options. And don't worry about most of these, but they're all there just to allow you to create your own version of all these elements. So making your own structural column, making your own telephone device. All right, that's a new one. I didn't see that one before. Uh, but the one we're thinking about is just metric profile. So use metric profile as the basis for this. And all that gives us, if I open that up, is two little crosshairs in the center of a blank sheet of paper. And these crosshairs define the insertion point for the profile. So if you click on an edge where you want this profile to go in, <coughs> the top, the, the edge that you click on will be this point here. Okay, simple enough. So just like last week where I drew the shape of the cornice, I'm going to draw... Can you take, because I didn't have the English thing. Yeah, I'll come down and fix that for you afterwards then. Um, I'll just do this once and then I'll pause it and then I'll, I'll let you all try it out, okay? Yeah. So which template Metric profile. So I'm going to make a, uh, I'm just going to use the line tool here. And I'm just going to draw, let's say, uh, let's draw it uh, 350, take it out by 25. And I'm just going to make it so it's obvious that we've done something. Uh, it might not be the prettiest uh, profile you've ever seen, but it's just going to make it obvious that uh, there's something happening there. So let's take it a little bit above, take it a little bit down. And it's very important, again, that you close it completely. So if you, don't, if you haven't got it closed, again, use the trim command here to trim the edges uh, together. But I can see it's trimmed together, so that's fine. So for some reason, we want to make this shape on the edge of the roof. I don't know. We're just, I don't know what reason that could be, but, but let's go with it anyway. So I'm going to save it first of all. Save as family. Put it on the uh, desktop. I'm just going to call it uh, fascia test. Save. And once we've given it a name, you can see the name turns up, turns up at the top here. Fascia test Revit family. 
we have the, the option to uh, load it into the project. So I'm just going to load it into the project. And now, even though we don't see anything, but it's in the memory of the project. So we can use that profile for any of these, of these options here. So let's go into the existing fascia that we've made, edit the type, and you can see once we edit it, there's a, a profile set up and a value. We can change that to our fascia test, apply, and it's saying could not create gutter. So we've, we've created a, a, a fascia that uh, isn't uh, compatible with where we've placed the gutter, so we'll just delete the gutter for the moment and say OK. And there's the, uh, the test fascia that we made. And then we have the option to flip it just like the other ones. So you can see that the joins and so on are not particularly uh, uh, made up, but that, that's because it's not really a, a, a correct fascia for a, for a project. But we have the option to use that profile. If we wanted, for example, to, uh, to make a gutter, uh, go to roof and go to gutter. And let's put another gutter back in here. We can also select the gutter edit the type and we we just come in here and the same profile options are in here so we could make a gutter that's shaped like that as well so you can see that both fascia and gutter are actually the same uh, they're actually the same command they just have different start points okay we could also go back into the wall here edit the type edit the structure preview and you can see that our initial sweeps are in there, we can add another sweep and we could put this fascia test also in the wall here. Uh, let's put it uh, 900 from the bottom and you can see it turns up <laughs> it turns up here, let's move it a little bit higher. New sweep, add fascia test Let's make it uh, 1600 from the base. Apply. OK. OK. So now that that profile, that element that we've made has, has also been added to the, uh, to the walls. But all the walls that have that, uh, that type of wall. OK. Does that make sense? Any questions? I'm going to pause that there. All right. Okay. So um, everybody has a pretty ugly house, probably uh, something like this, ready to be put into mass production uh, across the Danish landscape. Uh, it's not quite ugly enough yet, but uh, it's a standard Danish house. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about, I'm only going to talk about two more things and then I'm going to shut up. So uh, I'm going to talk about uh, roof by profile. So over here on the left, I'm going to draw another house, just very quickly. So I'm going to <coughs> select the wall tool and uh, save the project. And I'm just going to quickly draw a rectangle with the walls. So we've got the beginnings of, uh, of a house. And you can see this is it's actually automatic it's already it's still set to the uh it's still set to the stacked wall setting. So uh let's just Okay, let's do that again. I'm just gonna go to wall and then you get all these little drawing tools over here. So you just select rectangle or whatever shape you want, and then you just draw so now you've just drawn a house with, with all the details and the foundations and everything in the walls. So I'm just gonna go into the ground floor plan and flip it around because it's facing the wrong direction. back to 3D view again. So there we go. Now, <clears throat> so I'm going to draw roof by, uh, it's, it's, it's exactly the same process as the profile we made. Uh, it's called roof by extrusion. But uh, an extrusion is exactly the, it, extrusion comes from, you know, the plastics industry where you make a shape, then you squeeze plastic through it so the shape is continuous. 
uh, also for making steel beams and so on. It's the process is called extrusion. So they just use it here because it's effectively like it shows on the little picture there. You make a shape and then it extrudes that shape across the length of the building. So it works if you have uh, roofs that are complex but only in one direction. So just to show you how it works, roof by extrusion. The first thing Revit is asking us to do is pick a plane. <coughs> Because we could be drawing this anywhere in 3D space, so we need to tell it where, where we're picking. So I'm going to, uh, we can either select it, uh, which we don't need to get into right now, or we can pick it. So I'm going to say pick, and I'm just going to select a plane here. Uh, uh, wait, can, can you repeat the, the last comment? So from yeah. roof? Okay, so we've got a roof, yeah. roof by extrusion, oh, okay. pick okay. a plane, okay. I'm going to say we're going to start drawing on, uh, let's see if we can select this, this plane here. So you can see that it's kind of highlighted, so we're drawing from this direction. Uh, and uh, it, we, we don't need an offset, we're drawing on roof plan level, and we go OK. Everything goes gray. Yeah? Let me, I'll, fin I'll finish it once and then I'll, and then I'll answer questions, okay? So everything, everything goes gray, and that, that means that we're in roof editing tool. You can see it's uh, up here it says create extrusion roof profile. I can show the plane here that we're working on, show work plane by just turning on this, l this little light bulb up here at the top. So now it's showing us that we're actually drawing in this work plane. So that's actually our drawing board is angled up the wall like this. So we can draw anywhere along that plane. So we could just go to the front view Oops, we can just go to the front view to make it easier for us to draw it in flat. And we can use the same drawing tools uh, to make some kind of a shape of roof. Let's uh, just put a curve on the end just to make it great. So for some reason you've made a roof like this. I don't know, you, you're a talentless architect or something, so you've decided to make a roof like this. So you go except and it just draws it so if I rotate around that it's actually made the entire roof so it's as simple as that so all I need to do then is the same trick let the cursor stand on the wall press tab so it highlights them all select them attach and then it should attach it to the roof like that so now we've just made some kind of uh, steel profile roof or something but we can use this roof exactly the same as the other roofs. We can, we can give it all the layers that we want to, let's say we want to make it a, a tile roof for some reason, because that's, that's just set up in there. I've just selected it, and uh, it's also made of tiles. Okay, maybe not that realistic, but you can select it and make it a zinc roof or some kind of metal roof. Uh, and um, if we draw a section through it very quickly, just to show you, view, section, section two the roof is there with all the layers set up within it okay so that's just a quick one it's not a tool you use very often uh, but but it, it can be useful for some for some situations I'll pause that for a second okay guys I just got one more thing I thought I was gonna be a short one today but obviously not but I just got one more small thing I want to tell you about roofs and then we're finished then you finish basically uh, dealing with uh, most of the uh, overall ideas for roofs. <coughs> and this is to do with flat roofs. Um, so very quickly, without worrying about uh, where we're going to put it, I'm just going to make a flat roof. So I've got to go into the architecture tab, uh, roof, roof by footprint. And I'm just going to put it on the ground floor, say yes. And then we get the drawing tools. I'm just going to draw a rectangle and here's a roof okay if I accept that it's not going to be a flat roof because we've got uh, slopes on four sides so we just need to edit it and go around and uh, take off the slopes so go around and take off all the slopes completely all the slopes and then accept it so then we've got a very a completely flat roof but flat roofs, in reality, are never completely flat. They always have a, a slight a slope on them so that you get some uh, rain runoff. So in order to do that, I'm going to show you how to modify them so that even though the roof is, is flat, the insulation is sloped, because that's the way it's done 
uh, well, it's most commonly done that way, is that you cut the insulation so it's got a slope in it, and then you put your roof surface on it. So let's select it here. And over here, it's still, it's still a basic roof. So let's change it to a, a roof with asphalt and concrete. Okay, I'm selecting it to that. It doesn't change anything in the view here because nobody set up the materials, but you can see the edges have changed to some kind of concrete thing. So let's go back into it. Select it, edit the type, and edit the structure. And you see we've got roofing felt, we've got insulation of 190, and we've got concrete at the bottom. Okay. Over here, we have an option to make these layers variable. So I want to put a slope in the roof, but I don't want to change the, the roof slab itself because we want to have a flat concrete uh, roof slab because that's the easiest thing to build. So I'm going to put the slope in the, the insulation. So I'm going to make this layer variable. So I'm just going to tick that on. That allows us to vary the roof, but only that layer will vary. Everything else will remain what it should be. So I'm going to press OK and OK. And now you can see at the top here, we've got something, some options for the roof here. Modify sub-elements, for example. So if I just leave that going, this allows us to place points on the roof that have different levels within the flat roof. So I'm going to select one, and I'm going to just place a point in the center of the roof, more or less. Whoops. Did Add points. Add yeah, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to put that in the, in the center of the roof. And we can, if we come back and select the roof, that point is always there. We can always tab it, tab through, whoops, and select the point, if I can get my hands on it. Why won't it let me select that today? This is Revit just being difficult. Let's try it again. Let's add another point. Add point. Now it's allowing me to select. Okay, so so if you can figure out the the little the little the weird bit of the selection there, um, now you can see that if I if I've got the point selected, I've got these little arrows, and I can actually drag those elements up and down. You can add as many points as you want to the uh, to the slope to the um, to the roof, and you can play with levels on it and faces and so on, and give a dimension or a slope that's that's just within the flat roof. You can see that it's got a slight slope to it there, and I'm just going to draw a cross section through it, just so we can see it in more clarity. Let's draw a cross section, so view, section, and let's just draw a cross section across it here. Section three. And you can see that we have the roof down here, but the uh, asphalt layer is completely straight, but it's only the insulation there in the middle that's varied. So that's how you make a, a flat roof with a slight slope on it. We can go in there afterwards and we can actually, if I can get this working, it's working differently. Yeah, we can select it and we can give it a, a specific value, for example, and we can change uh, the roof slope in that kind of a way. Okay? That's all. That's the last thing. Yeah? In real life, it depends on the roof that you're designing. So you have to figure out where you want the water to come off the roof. So you just make a slope so it heads towards the gutter. It's up to you. It's up to you to put it. So there's no, there's no well, there is a right way to do it, but, but I'm just telling you the process of making the model. Uh, um, so, but you can always come back afterwards and use the tab button to, uh, to either just drag it up and down or fill in an actual value for the uh, roof slope. Okay. That's enough for today.